The mess that we are in is not a crisis of a free society. Now, I think we need to bring hope to people by showing them what's gone wrong, doing it with that good hu humour and that charm, and showing them a better way. So what's our goal together? Well, it's a society that's prosperous, happy, and free. Wouldn't that be nice? Prosperous, happy, and free. I want you to imagine you're waking up on a desert island. You start asking yourself questions. What's the first one? Am I safe? Oh, who am I? Getting your memory back. Who am I? Who cares? Where's my community? What shall I do? What shall I do for work? How shall I produce something? And then how am I going to find something to look forward to? Joy. So it's security, identity, community, work, and joy. If you look at those five things, they're the essence of a good life. We should have, together, good answers for all of those questions so that people can know that they're safe and secure physically, that they're safe and secure in their identity and they can be whoever they want to be. They need to know that people care about them. We're all only human. We're defined by our relationships. They need good quality work, work which is productive and well-paid, and then they need something to look forward to. Which of those five things is the job of the coercive power of the state? Definitely security. I don't want the state telling you or me about my identity. I want to choose my own friends and family. Maybe family we'll start with, but I want to choose my own friends. Work. Now, this is the crucial bit and why I'm going to focus on capitalism, and certainly joy. I don't want the government telling me where to find joy, and I don't think you do either, right? So this is the reason I put those five things to you, is because actually, if you believe in a free society, if you want a society that is happy, prosperous, and free, you need to start asking yourself, how, do, how does everyone else around me see the world? What do they need? How do I get alongside them where they are and lift them up? And what's the role of the coercive power of the state in doing that? Whatever we discuss here today, in the end, government ministers have to table legislation, pass it through Parliament, and then it's enforced. That is not a nice process. It is a brutal process. It is compulsory. To what extent do you want to be coerced? So I put that slightly philosophical stuff out there because it is the essence of the problem we face. If you ask yourself what is conservative or perhaps classical liberal economic policy, you know what it is. Limited government, low taxes, balanced budgets, sound money. Have we had those things? Anyone think we've had those things? No, okay. This is a crisis of omnipotent government, and we all saw that, right? My goodness, your generation in the audience during the COVID crisis, some of the best years of your life, just locked down, amazing. Would never have believed it was possible, but it happened. So it's a crisis of omnipotent government, record high taxes. It's a crisis of surplus after, uh, sorry, deficit after deficit. It's a crisis of easy money. So this is not a crisis of a free society. It's a crisis of interventionism. If you look at state spending before the First World War, it was about 10 to 15 percent of GDP, depending how you measure it. You then get two wars of transformation with high spending. And then after the Second World War, you've got very high spending, who, who's ever been in power. Typically spending beyond what could be taken in tax. We've run deficits, and then we've, got ri we've coped with those deficits in the long run by debasing the currency. This is why I always walk around in, with in my pocket an ounce of uh, silver. Why do I carry an ounce of silver? Anyone tell me? That is true, but it's also because I can't afford to lose an ounce of gold. Um, I've got $100 trillion in my pocket, too. It's an incredible thing. Alan Greenspan wrote about this in the 60s. He foresaw that if politicians make enormous welfare state promises to people, you end up with promises and obligations well beyond the capacity of people to pay for it through tax. And in the end, you end up debasing the currency to cover those promises. Does that make sense? Greenspan foresaw it in the 60s, but it wasn't just Greenspan. Mistakenly quoting uh, Lenin, Keynes said the best way to destroy the capitalist system is to debauch the currency. Now, I'm not going to try and give you a big lecture on monetary theory today, but where do you think money comes from? It's loaned into existence. When banks make a loan, they create money. They create a deposit, which is their liability, and they create the loan to you, which is their asset. And if you don't believe me, search on the web for money creation in the modern economy by the Bank of England. Loads of people argue about it, but trust the Bank of England on this one. For year after year, the money supply has been increased, even before QE. So Labour, between 1997 and 2010, thought they'd abolished boom and bust. You might be too young to remember that, but they did. What happened with the money supply is it was 700 billion. The broad money supply in 1997 was about 700 billion pounds. That's less than the government spends each year now. 
By 2010, the money supply had reached 2.2 trillion, a great big accelerating rush to destruction. That's why they'd ab abolished boom and bust, because it's like having a credit card. I could go out with a 10,000 pound credit card and go and have a whale of a time for a day, but this is what happened. The money supply was allowed to roar away. People didn't well understand the distortions it was sowing. It led to the global financial crisis. And it, unfortunately, because the response has been more QE and easy money, I'm afraid we're heading into yet more problems. There's a guy at the back nodding furiously called Harry. Give us a wave, Harry. Harry and I and uh, one of our friends have just written a, a book about, is this the biggest bubble in history? Spoiler alert, yes. There's a documentary coming out and a textbook chapter, but you can get that on my website. So the crucial point out of that that I want to make, I don't want to talk to you about monetary theory because we haven't got time. The point is this is not a crisis of a free society and capitalism. Have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter? Well, send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed.